they would lynch her. They did, and he laughs at them. Hi everybody, Russell the West End Network. Hope you're all safe and well. Happy Wednesday. If you're new around here, thanks for joining us. Please, if you like what we do, give it all, even if you don't like what we do, just give us give us a like anyway. Because it's nice. It's nice. It's good to share and it's good to talk. So if you've got a comment, please let us know. There's some some guys who always comment, and I and I love the fact that you always comment. Um, not always positive, but then we're not always positive as West Ham fans, are we? So fair enough, my friends. But appreciate you taking the time to do it um we've got a, a daily show today some sort of snippets a bit of news all over the thing that's been reported um so we thought we'd give you a bit of a snippets uh snippet show today the first one is around the ownership of west ham united and um a potential change to mco's multi-club organization ownerships most multi club ownerships and uh, and maybe a, a rethink by uefa in terms of how these are handled um and you know this major rethink could clear the path for someone like daniel kudzinski for to complete a full takeover of west ham we know he's the second biggest shareholder behind david sullivan he bought 27 percent back in november 2021 um it's been repeatedly um speculated that his eventual idea was to do a full takeover West Ham, whether you believe that or don't believe that. That's been heavily speculated. Lots of news outlets have said that. And then there was speculation that for years, Sullivan and the late David Gold were going to sell their shares um, and, and and get out of the club, basically, after the embarrassment clause comes comes to an end, which was in March 2023, where we're in now. Um, and that's, you know, that's now... There's been, that's, that's, I mean, that that's um, ex, was it, embarrassment clauses has, has been expired now um, because we've gone past the 10 years. Now, a major rethink could clear the path for Kutrinsky to complete a full takeover. One sticking point when he took the 27% and we assumed that was the next step, you know, that he is, they've all agreed the price of how much they'd sell each other's shares to each other with um, was the fact that he owned a major share in um, Sparta Prague. And there's a current ruling um, that you can't um, you can't play. Uh, basically, it was Article Five of the UEFA Constitution states that no individual legal entity may have control or influence over more than one club participating in a UEFA a UEFA club competition. So, in essence, you can't own two clubs in the same competition. So, um, you know, and that's always been the elephant in the room with Kuczynski, um, because, you know, it's a set rule. Um, so you don't have any influence in, say, the Champions League. If you owned Paris Saint-Germain and Man United and say, you know, you wanted both to get through to the final or whatever like that, you could, you know, or you want to sell players to each other and to, to improve the, the squad for a particular competition. You know, it's all a bit, it could all be a bit murky. I know football is a very murky world, but even more work murky. Now, the current rule does favour Sp uh, Sparta Prague a little bit more because, you know, they're, they're regularly competing in the top spots for in the Czech League. And the likelihood is they, they, they play in the Champions League pretty much most years uh, or drop down to the Europa, Europa, Conf Europa League, rather. Um, now, obviously, we don't necessarily expect to be in the Champions League. That, that, sail is, that ship has sailed a couple of, like last year, wasn't it? The year before, unfortunately. And obviously, we're competing to stay in the Premier League, let alone think about Europe. But, in theory, even if we're relegated, it doesn't matter. If we win the Conference League, which would be lovely, um, we all automatically go into the group stages of the Europa League. Say, for example, Sparta Prague will then qualify for the Champions League. Maybe they have a crap conf uh, group stages and they drop into the Europa League, um, as always the third place teams do. What happens then? Because we're both potentially playing in the same um in the same competition um now that's that's the issue and i think there could be a not just for west ham but there could be a, that similar sort of scenario could pan out for other places where they might have a controlling stake in an in two clubs in different continents or in different countries for example not continents because that doesn't make any sense countries in europe for example um now the president of uefa uh alexander Kelly, um, has apparently said 
uh, in the interview uh, on the overlap, Gary Neville's overlap, that he's having a rethink, they're having a rethink on existing rules. Um, it's needed and whether there's basically there's two options one is to keep the ban and prohibit clubs from from having the same owner and same competition so you know the idea is if that happened next year um one one of the clubs will be banned from competing in there um because there's the ownership which you know isn't fair for either if, if it was sparta prague or west ham or the other option is let them both play in the same com- in the same competition, um, and apparently there's been sort of a, a lightening of this. Um, and obviously they didn't say it's because of Krasinski and West Ham. There's several other scenarios that I said. He was quoted in saying, um, "We're not thinking about Man United only in terms of the takeover and in terms of MCOs. We've had five or six owners of clubs who want to buy another club. We have to see what to do. The options are that." It stays like it is, or we allow them to play in the competition. I'm not sure yet, but we have to speak about these regulations and see what we can do. Now, obviously, it's I mean that's obviously it's a, it's a it's the elephant in the room when it comes to the discussions about Daniel Krajinski and a, a full takeover. If that's his eventual plan, we don't know. We just don't know. But it's another it's another sort of uh, hurdle to overcome, and it's a hurdle which could be um, slightly lower. Than it is at the moment. We'll just say it like that. That will do. Um, elsewhere, could Saeed Ben Rama be off to the it- off to Italy? Not the Italy. Be off to Italy in the summer. Is it Saeed Ben Rama's Italian job? Was he only supposed to blow the bloody doors off? Um, apparently, AC Milan reportedly wants to sign Ben Rama in the summer transfer window. Um, according to a report from Sempera Milan, the Italian giants want to sign him at the end of the season. And apparently, West Ham will demand anywhere from 22 to 26 million quid for the Algerian international. The 27 year old has been one of the best performers this season, without doubt. Um, Eight goals, five assists in 36 games. So no other West Ham player has had more goal involvements than Ben Rama this season with his 13. He's had a tough time at West Ham, let's be honest, the last few years. Um, obviously, the way Moyes has, has utilised him. Um, but, you know, he's had a consistent run of games. And that's all I think he really needed to get up to speed with just the way that he Moyes wants him to play and, and how much he can express himself um and I, I i mean he's a really important player i think again one of those players a bit similar to antonio when he plays well the team play well he does make things tick um i think losing him would be a, an awful blow to west ham but obviously if we're in the championship we might have to leave he might have to go anyway but if we're in the premier league I think it would be a shame. I think you know the emergence of of see the the resurgence from injury of of Maxwell Cornet. You know, arguably him and Ben Rama are competing for the same spot, but I don't think that's a bad thing. Cause I think it gives you options. It means Benny can maybe move into a ten row, or or you know even Cornet can play more up top, which is what he did when he came on for the um for the Aston Villa game. But it would be a shame, and, and obviously you know potentially with the news of. Of Scarmacca, we might talk about that Hammers headlines. A couple of obviously Italian teams are looking at him potentially. It could be, um, yeah, it could be a double blow for West Ham in terms of moving uh, players moving to Italy. One good piece of news, another good bit, good piece of news is obviously we just better into into the international break so there's no West Ham to ruin our weekends for a couple of weekends. But also, good news is, uh, under 21, um goalkeeper Christian Heggy has been called up to the Hungarian international senior squad for the first time. Congratulations, Christian. The 17, the 19 year old played for his country's under 21s um, back in November and has done, but he will now link up with the senior squad later this month. Hungary, Hungary play Estonia in a friendly before taking on Bulgaria in Euro 2024 qualifiers four days later. Both games take place at the Pushkas arena in Budapest. Um, and he's one of three goalkeepers called up with the teenagers joining. Wow, some great names. Uh, Ferran Klossis, TC's Dennis Dipuse, and Zenegalenzi. Someone's just smashed the keyboard there. That's not a word, is it? Zenegalenzi's TE's Patrick Delj, uh, De- Demgen in Marco Rossi's side. Um, Heggy, um, 
captains the under 21s um but he has been named in a few obviously match day squads recently for the first team um partly because obviously the the eye injury to um, Fabianski, who by all accounts is going to be returning on after the international break he's already doing training he was doing training last week he was pitched in the club's sort of montage training thing so good luck to Heggy. Great to see him. Uh, he's always highly regarded at West Ham in terms of being a very good young goalkeeper. And so uh, it's great experience for him. Um, speaking of an experienced player, let's talk about Aaron Cresswell. Um, you know, he's technically in, in the last year of his contract. And apparently West Ham are one of the four uh, front runners, rather, to sign Jordan uh, Zamora from, not Zamora, Zamora, from um, Bournemouth on a free transfer, potentially. And that could finally be the sort of the nail in the coffin to Aaron Cresswell's West Ham career. According to several uh, reports, the Hammers are currently leading the race for him, for the 23-year-old left-back who could leave the, the Cherries in the summer after a contract dispute, which saw him dropped by former West Ham midfielder and current Bournemouth manager Gary O'Neill uh, for last weekend's 1-0 victory over Liverpool. Uh, the Zimbabwean international saw a one-year extension triggered in March 2022, but he's yet to agree a new deal at the Vitality Stadium, meaning he could join West Ham on a free when his contract expires at the end of the season. Um, I mean, he's had a, a, a very good Premier League, yeah, first decent season in the Premier League. Um uh, well, sorry, last season he had a very good season in terms of the um, championship, which got him into the Premier League. Not so much this season, I'll be honest. Um, but uh, you know, I think in a more solid Premier League outfit, uh, I think he could really shine and show off what he can do, particularly in the attacking sense. He's a very attacking left back, and would definitely complement Emerson in, in that sort of um, in those roles. And could eventually, it could basically replace Aaron Cresswell. Indeed, um, you know, if this is the end of, I mean, Cress has been there for nine years now at West Ham. Um, he may well be offered a one year extension. I think that, uh, by all accounts, all the discussions about contract extensions so far, I think Fabianski's got an option on his. Um, Oggy's got an option. Oggy, Oggy comes to the end of his contract as well. That will be dependent on what happens, I think, in basically what league we're going to be in whether we offer these guys extensions their contracts so it might be it, we might offer them one, another year on top maybe for crest we don't know but um i think you know someone bringing like jordan in would be a really good really good suggestion you know and obviously that that gives you got to think and then in terms of production line you've got someone like ollie scarls who is seen as a you know a real bright prospect it gives him time to develop by then, you know, maybe another year or so, two years, maybe. Wait, wait till he's in his sort of late twin, early twenties, late nineteens, early twenties, and then you've got likes of Emerson will probably be coming to the end, and then you've got Jordan and Scars as a as a nice two on the left hand side. That's actually makes sense, doesn't it, in my mind? But anyway. Um, <laughs> it never does pan out that way, does it? And that's it, my friends. Thank you very, very much for joining me. Um, let me know what you think about all those stories. Um, I appreciate their transfer room. I mean, you know, we're not, the, I think Andy said in one of the comments that, you know, it's not, you know, it's, it's not click. It's all clickbait. It's not clickbait. It's basically, it's been reported and, and we report it to you, but you know, we've always done transfer rumors regardless of whether the, the we don't just stick them to that month or that period over the summer. And I think there's some interesting movements and shakers really. So um, anyway, take care, stay safe, stay warm, stay humble, keep the faith, my friends, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Ta-ta.